How's it going, fellow Detroit Burbings fans? So, two weeks ago, we talked about the trade deadline and who could be up for grabs or at least get other teams to make offers. Then last week, we talked about prospects, players the Red Wings could aim to trade for, and teams we could weaponize our cap against. We recommend you check those videos out before watching this video, but regardless, let's get one thing straight. The Red Wings, assuming they don't get really good really quick, are most likely going to be sellers at the trade deadline. Now, they have a multitude of prospects coming up in each position, except for another star center to go along with Larkin that would take this team from good to great in just a couple years. So, really, Iserman and the Wings could have a fairly quiet deadline and for the most part stay pat. But, Iserman is a businessman and will likely be looking for deals and possibly be looking for a solution for the center issue. After all, he did solve the goaltending issue both now and into the future within a week or two heading into the draft. Even the biggest fans of Iserman, I'm sure, did not see that coming. Regardless, before we get too far into today's video, I'm going to give a shout out to 500S Riders 22 We hit the 1,000 subscriber mark a little bit ago and want to start thanking you guys for making the Red Wing Nation community a community. So, if you want to get a shout out, make sure you subscribe and join lots of other fans of this great team and sport. So back to the trade deadline. Trying to solve the number two center issue, the biggest team Eiserman could look to make a deal with would be the Los Angeles Kings. They have Alex Turcotte, Quinton Byfield, Velarde, Akil Thomas, and more prospects along with their top tier centers in the NHL like Kopitar and Denault. Regardless, they have a lot of players and prospects at center, and well, there's only four center spots on an NHL roster. They also are relatively weak on the left-hand side on defense. Well, the Detroit Remings have a number of left-handed defensive prospects, more so than spots on the team. So naturally, the teams may be able to come together and trade a prospect for a prospect. Obviously, some other players or picks may be included to offset any value. Now, I actually talked to Kings fans on a Reddit post to see what the value we would need to trade to get one of their better centers. It appears Byfield is off limits. Turcotte is most likely available, but would come at a high price. Velarde would be an option to be shopped around. I'm expecting Iserman to have his own list of players who would want to fill in any holes he sees. So this is assuming Iserman is aiming to get one of those guys and believes they have what it takes to be a top-notch center. Now in terms of left-handed defensemen, we can trade away. Really, Wallander seems to be the answer. Simon Evidson and Johansson seem to be taking up the top two spots on the left-hand side, and Sabrengo doesn't have enough value to bring in a top prospect, so he seems likely to round off the bottom pairing in Detroit when everything pans out. So for Turcotte, I said the Rebbings would acquire him for Wallander, a second and a third round draft pick, and Nick Letty. Something that would give the Kings help on their left hand side both now and into the future. Personally, I hope and think Eisenman would make the deal go through with less, but overall this trade isn't horrible if he thinks that Turcotte can be a top tier talent. It forfeits some future, but gives a top center prospect without torching the farm. Now, assuming the Wings go after Velarde, someone who is older and at least considered a weaker prospect by most teams than Turcotte, I had the Wings acquiring him for Wallander and a fourth round draft pick. Once again, if Iserman sees the value, it won't hurt the farm too much, and we aren't losing too much draft capital either. So, let's move to another major piece that could be moved at the deadline. Philip Zadina. Zadina was once a major cornerstone of this rebuild. Since then, new faces have come in and established themselves over Zadina, making him somewhat expendable. And well, even though he is a complete NHLer with loads of time left in his career, his 14 points in 45 games played are startling. But realizing half the battle is that Zadina's offensive abilities just don't work with Coach Blashill's system, and along with his frustration, a breath of fresh air may be needed for the young player. So where do you trade a young player who has struggled to really break out 
and get the value that the Wings would want out of him. Well, look for a team who has a player in the same position, or find a team who thinks he's going to break out and is willing to overpay. Well, let's take a look at Edmonton, home of former Red Wing GM Ken Holland, the one who drafted Zadina. Well, the Oilers are in a tough spot. They started the year on fire and then fell off, and are now a good amount of points away from a playoff spot. They know McDavid and Dreisaitl are getting frustrated. It's a possibility the pressure may make Holland overpay in hopes they get Zadina to turn into his former self and score lots of goals. And give the Oilers a major offensive edge that is young. But who would the Rebings acquire from the Oilers? Well, they could obviously just acquire draft picks, maybe a first round pick or more, or they could aim to get a forward. One Dylan Holloway comes to mind. He has had some trouble with injuries that has kept him off the ice a little bit this season. But you can see, point per game in the AHL right now, and well over a point per game playing in the NCAA last year, Holloway is a really good player and plays center and wing, so a possibility of a strong center that may be able to turn into a second line center, but at the very least, a good player that adds flexibility down the middle. So in this trade, I had the Oilers acquiring Zadina for Holloway and a second round draft pick. Zadina gets a breath of fresh air and a chance to start over. Holland gets his player and a potential breakout winger. The Red Wings get a high potential prospect and a good pick. Also, the Ottawa Senators have a defenseman that is going through a similar situation, Eric Branchnum. Every time he gets called up and seems to be establishing himself, he gets sent down to the minors and or gets his playing time cut. The Senators also have a number of good defensive prospects coming up, so they could be trying to shop him around. Now, Branchstrom is a left-handed defenseman, which would only add to the mess I mentioned earlier that made Wallander expendable. But if the Rebbings trade him away to the Kings along with Letty, well, Branchstrom could immediately come onto the team and fill the hole Letty left and help ease the transition from the older defensive core to the younger one and may even push the Remix to be more competitive. So I had the Senators acquiring Zadina for Branchstrom, one for one. Personally, I would like to see the Wings acquire a pick as well, even if it is a later round draft pick. Now in terms of teams we can exploit with our cap, mainly playoff contending teams that need to make a major push in the playoffs. Now I know most people don't want to think of Nemestikov leaving, but considering how high his trade value is, not to mention how light his cap hit is, you're almost guaranteed to get way more in return. And well, the Toronto Maple Leafs are in desperate need of quality depth players and to get out of the first round. They also have no cap space, so they can't just go after anyone, meaning it's very likely that they will overpay for Nemestikov. In my mock trade, I had the Red Wings acquiring a second round pick or Nicholas Robertson, who's a young player coming up in Toronto who struggled to establish himself on a stacked offensive lineup for Vladislav Nemestikov. He could be a good pickup that could potentially break out as well. Assuming Nick Letty isn't traded in a package deal, he could be traded to the Florida Panthers. The Panthers are looking to add some depth on their defense and on their left hand side. So trading Nick Letty, who's had a little bit of a rough season for a third round draft pick, most likely the assuming the Red Wings retain some salary, is not a bad deal. Leaving one more player or veteran who could be sold at the deadline, the goaltender, Thomas Grice. Grice is having a rough season right now with a .894 save percentage, but teams know he can be a good goaltender and heading into playoffs, you need a good backup goaltender. Well, this year it seems the Pens are in need of that, and maybe trying to get one last push into the playoffs with their aged core. I can imagine the Rubbings only receiving maybe a third or fourth round pick, depending on how much Eiserman can push the Pens. Please comment your mock trades down below and your thoughts as to these mock trades. We want to hear all your thoughts. That is what Red Wing Nation is all about. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like. That way we make more content that you like. And lastly, if you're a Red Wings fan, if you're a hockey fan, if you're just a great person, make sure you subscribe and join lots of other great fans of this team and sport. And until next time, lights on the Red Light District.